Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture today on epigastric hernia. So, let me write again. So, what is epigastric hernia? Epigastric hernia, it is also called as fatty hernia of linear alba. Fatty hernia of linear alba. So, what are we seeing in epigastric hernia? So, in epigastric hernia, this hernia is most common in females. So, this epigastric hernia, if this is the, um, think that this is the abdomen and this is the xiphoid process, this is the umbilicus. Any hernia that occurs between the xiphoid process and umbilicus in the midline due to the defect in the alenia alba that is called as uh, epigastric hernia. First, there is there should be defect in linea alba. Okay, that is first point. There should be defect in linea alba, and that defect should not be from should be from xiphoid process to umbilicus, and not from umbilicus to pubic symphysis. So that is that should be from always it should be from xiphoid process to umbilicus, but not from umbilicus to pubic symphysis. So, this is called as epigastric hernia or fatty hernia of linea alba. Now, the defect which occurs, it, the, the defect is mainly in linea alba. So, what is the, so this is the umbilical sac. Okay. Uh, so, what are the clinical features? You see a swelling in the midline uh, with an impulse of coughing. Cough impulse will be positive. Mostly it has no sac, so it is a sacless hernia and the content of this epigastric hernia will most commonly be omentum. Okay, sometimes it can also contain small bubble. Okay, so there is a swelling in the epigastric region. Sometimes it is pain, it, the patient presents with pain and sometimes there won't be any pain. Sometimes it may also be associated with some peptic ulcer disease. Okay, if it uh, only and only if there is complications uh, like irreducibility, obstruction, strangulation, then the fevers like vomiting, toxicity, abdominal distension, all these are seen or else no, no such features are seen. Mostly they are uh, symptomless with only swelling and some amount of uh, discomfort or dragging pain. So how are you going to treat it? Treatment, uh, you'll have to first give a vertical incision, that is one. Uh, then the treatment option depends upon the size of the sac. If the hernial sac is more than 4 cm, then you will reduce the intestinal content. If the hernial sac is more than 4 cm, then you will have to give a support by propylene mesh. You will give a support by propylene mesh. This is how you are going to treat the epigastric hernia. So I think you guys have understood about the prope uh, pro about the epigastric hernia. So thank you guys for watching my lecture. Thank you.